great is his faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to turn to the person standing next to you and tell him, great is his faithfulness. Tell him again, great is his faithfulness. It doesn't matter what you can see right now. Great is his faithfulness. Amen. Allow me, before you sit down, to recognize uh, the people who will be overseeing this occasion. Starting with Dr. Apo Apostle Dr. Robert Mzomba. Let's give him a hard clap. Come on, I believe you can appreciate him better than that. Amen, amen, amen. And then we have Archbishop Dr. Arthur Kitonga. Amen, amen. Those are the two gentlemen that God has ordained for this occasion so that they can take our brother to the next level. And let me say this. When you see a friend of yours lifted up, know it is time for you to be lifted up. Because when our brother becomes a bishop, somebody is certainly going to become a pastor. Amen? So let's rejoice with him as this happens. Allow me also to recognize Apostle Kimani and his wife, Reverend Naomi, who are their best couple for this occasion, and they have been friends many years. Now we have several bishops, we have several pastors, and you are there. You may not be a pastor, but you are there. This occasion... We are here because God has ordained be here. Why it not for God, you not be here. And that's why we are singing, great is his faithfulness. So as you sit, as you take your seat, I want you to do me a favor. One more, one more time. Tell the person standing next to you, you are highly favored. Tell him again, you are highly favored. And I'm honored to be your neighbor. Right, just before you sit down, just before you sit down. We have our father, Papa Bire Rubanza. Amen. Amen. Uh, those of you that are a little bit old in faith, and don't worry if you're young, Papa Bire Rubanza is an old face in the ministry. He comes from Zambia, but he's a Kenyan by virtue of connection. Amen. Let's give him a loud of applause. Amen. Let me request you to take your seats. Kindly take your seats. My name is Pastor Kamau. And together with Pastor John Mangangi, we will be your MC for the occasion the next couple of hours. So may I request that you bear with us. But we'll make it comfortable for you. I now want to take this opportunity to invite you to a documentary about our brother, Pastor Othaniel Mwabiri. We'll be watching a documentary that will take a few minutes about our brother. And as I take my seat, the media team should be on it right now. Welcome. In your presence. Othaniel Mwabiri was born in Nairobi City on 25th January 1973. A last born of three siblings, he studied at Brahma Sabha Nursery School and Moranga Road Primary School before joining St. Aquinas High School. At the tender age of 11 years, Othniel got interested in drinking alcohol and chewing cut, popularly known as Mira, smoking bunny, among other bad vices. Though he successfully managed to keep these bad habits from his parents, he realized prior pressure was pushing him to the brink. All this while, his talent in hockey was shining hands, becoming the youngest player to join the Kenya youth team. He was also enrolled to play for Kenya Breweries by the time he was in Standard 8. Every step of his life, the good and the bad, the beautiful and the ugly was just a process. The refiner was preparing him to greatly use him in future as a vessel of honor to accomplish his God-given mandate. While in high school, Othniel kissed his destiny and turning point when he made the decision 
to surrender his life to Christ, a decision to date he is grateful he made. He would later be baptized in the Holy Ghost during a Christian Union meeting in high school, an experience he terms as heavenly. Well, a brilliant mind in school, Othniel later graduated with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Biochemistry from the University of Nairobi, Master's of Art degree in Leadership Studies at the International Leadership University, and a Master's degree in Environmental Planning and Management at University of Nairobi, among other education accomplishments. He simply attributes all his education success to the grace of God. In 1998, he exchanged vows and tied note with the love of his life, Nancy. Together, they are blessed with two children, Shavout and Tamulika. They continue to serve God as apostles to the body of Christ and in the marketplace. My name is Nancy Mobili and I'm the wife to Pastor Othniel Mobili, today who is being consecrated uh, as a bishop and being commissioned as an apostle. I've been married to him for the past 20 years, we're in our 20th year of marriage. But for as far as knowing him is concerned, I have known him for more than half my life. Apart from being a friend, a confidant, a husband, he's also my pastor at the City Revival Temple under the Ministry of Gospel Revival Center. And I look up to him for spiritual guidance. And I just want to say, God bless you, Pastor Mobili, as today you step into a new chapter of your life. I believe in what he carries and is a man that has got, a, he's got a, a church that is not bigger than many churches in Kenya or in Nairobi, but he has got a heart for his nation and he, he sacrificed for his nation. He moves around the nation. He has been involved in initial action of drafting of cabinet memorandum among holding other offices in government as both advisor and mastermind in launching many government offices. In the leadership capacity he has equally indulged, participating actively in many leadership and community services to date. He serves as a board member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelical member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelical member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelical member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelical member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals 
member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national umbrella body of evangelicals member of Evangelical Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national Alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a national alliance of Kenya for the past five years. This is a Let's appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Buenas fiestana. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful testimony and story just of the journey that um, Reverend Mobili has taken together with his wife and just coming to this place. Uh, it's a tremendous blessing. You know, you never know. Uh, when, whenever we do evangelism work, you never know what is inside the person you're reaching. Praise the Lord. Just never know. You know. Who knew that uh, in that young man that was chewing cut, who knew that all the Hebrew that we needed to know was inside that man? Hallelujah. All the potential that was in him. So we want to appreciate God for that and really give glory to God. Um, I know there's one, um, one guest that should have been on the video that was not able to make it at the time. His name is Professor Eric Aseka. Uh, Professor El Eric Aseka is the Vice Chancellor of the International Leadership University where Apostle Mabili um, took his master's degree some time back. And I uh, want to just take a few moments and give Professor Eric Aseka just one or two minutes to come and share, share one word. And meanwhile, uh, as he's coming, we want to request the children, watoto wako na wimbo ambao ulikuwa na imba, wako tayari. Asante na shukuru sana kwevu watoto. Uh, Professor Kiendelea kuongea hapa, ngelipenda kuomba tafadhali. Mje tu mjipange hapa mbele, ili kuomba tuweze kuwakua muda. Kwa hivyo tafadhali watoto wale ambao mko tayari mje tu mjipange hapa mbele immediately professor Kimaliza tuweze kuendelea na wimbo itakuwa ni vizuri thank you welcome professor Eric god bless you uh, the presiding bishops over this function apostle Mabili and his dear wife the bishops senior pastors and distinguished guests who have come today to witness this event. May I just correct that I'm no longer the Vice Chancellor of International Leadership University. I retired last year, and right now I am a professor there. I came to know Apostle Othniel Mobili, introduced to me by my good friend, Bion Kamau, and uh, he invited me to make a presentation which was a review of his wonderful book, Jubilee Season. And on making that diagnostic review, it impressed Apostle Mwabili so much that he desired to come to that institution whereby that kind of critical awareness is being generated and he enrolled uh, in a Master of Arts 
in leadership degree at that university at a time when I was the vice chancellor. I became his supervisor after he finished his coursework in his MA leadership studies thesis and I noted great qualities in his ministerial and intellectual character that I want to talk about briefly. At ILU, Apostle Mobili has been equipped with great leadership perspectives and skills that will be a boon to the body of Christ. He has the demonstrable diligence and the character of a godly leader that will enhance the role of the church as God's delivery system. Apostle Mobili is a humble man whose godly disposition has positioned him for a greater role as a leader in the Church of Christ today. He commands very deep spiritual knowledge and wisdom, and in him we see the meekness of wisdom. Meekness means exercising wisdom, and meekness leads to reasonableness. I have not seen a person who is reasonable and calm and restrained, such as Apostle Mwabili. Meekness cares about the truth, hence the importance of learning. And despite having acquired a degree and yet an, another master's degree, he was ready to enroll for a master's degree at the International Leadership University. Apostle Mwabili has the heart of a godly leader. As a leader flowing in the prophetic dimension of ministry, he harnesses the intuitive faculties of his heart as John Maxwell recognizes the importance of intuition in leadership by saying that a leader should observe and practice the law of intuition. When you allow the spirit of Christ to drive you as a leader, then you have self-mastery. Apostle Mobili is a man of focus. He is blessed with this quality of which Benjamin Franklin will say, and I quote, energy and persistence conquers things, all things. To stay focused, you need an agenda-driven burden. His character and godly disposition has enabled him to command great mobilization influence. He commands admirable interpersonal skills, and he therefore has interpersonal skills that give considerable power, give him considerable power with the people. He therefore commands three critical components of effective leadership, namely godly character, two, competence, and three, connection with the people. Apostle Mwabili is not only a clear-minded communicator, he is a man with a deep, a deep sense of civility in his communication. He is also fair-minded, he is broad-minded, and he is open-minded. Fair-mindedness requires intellectual courage and intellectual humility, which I admire in my brother. I therefore take this opportunity this day to congratulate him as we celebrate the Christ-given virtues that have been cultivated in our brother Othniel Mwabili. May we remind ourselves the grace of humility that is worked into our lives through the discipline of service. Of all spiritual disciplines, service is the most conducive to the growth of humility. We are therefore celebrating you, Apostle Mwabili. And celebration brings joy into life, and joy is what makes us strong. We cannot continue for long in anything without celebration. And therefore, critical to celebration is thanksgiving. Joy is the motor, the thing that keeps everything else going. Joy produces energy. It makes us strong. And that is why we join you in celebrating the doings of the Lord in your life. You have never let me down. Whenever I've called upon you, you have responded. And lately, when I invited you to please consider joining AFREG, of which I'm the interim chairman, you obliged. And I'm very grateful to you. May your obedience to Christ result in more joy in your life. Without obedience, joy becomes hollow and artificial. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me.
Thank you, Professor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Any takers for a master's degree at ILU? Any takers? One, six, seven. Thank you. God bless you. I'm sure Professor will be happy to have you there if you should be able to be, to be interested to do that. Now, we want to welcome our children to come. To Karibisha. We are to pick up coffee and apokuja. Watoto njoni hapa mbele. God bless you. Hallelujah. They're going to be presenting a song to us uh, in just the next few moments uh, to celebrate this wonderful occasion uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the Shofa House children and they are coming with their teachers and their leaders and um, just to appreciate their pastor as he steps into a new place of ministry and service and we want to just appreciate them. Uh, they have a presentation for us. They are coming out in wonderful t-shirts. Some of them are national colors. Others are just rejoicing in the grace of God. So God bless you so much, team, as you go ahead and um, make this presentation. And that'll be great in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Please go ahead, uh, children's team. Thank you. Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13. Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13, it says, While we ask you, brethren, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord, and who admonish you, hold them in the highest regard, in love, because of their work, live in peace with each other. Thessalonians 5, 12 to 13. Amen. And our pastor, as you move into your next calling, this is our prayer for you. We are telling God, Akuongoze kwa huruma zake Asipo kubariki huwezi kwenda Tunajua Bila nguvu zake huwezi kwenda Tunajua Bila nguvu zake huwezi kwenda Kwa mkono wake Kweli atakubariki Kwa mkono wake Kweli atakubariki Baraka zake Baraka zake Ziwe na wewe baraka zake baraka zake ziwe na wewe na macho yake na macho yake yawe na wewe na macho yake na macho yake yawe na wewe mapenzi yake mapenzi yake Iwe na wewe mapenzi yake mapenzi yake yawe na wewe kwa mkono wake kwa mkono wake kweli atakubariki kwa mkono wake kweli atakubariki Alikuchagua kabla hujazaliwa Atakuchagua nabi wa mataifa yo Atakutangulia hutaogopa chochote Kwa mkono wake kweli atakubariki Kwa mkono wake kweli atakubariki baraka zake baraka zake ziwe na wewe baraka zake baraka zake ziwe Atakubariki Kwa mkono wake Kweli Atakubariki
kubariki kwa mkono wake kwa mkono wake kweli atakubariki kwa mkono wake kweli atakubariki Tutaki hata kamwe lazima tuungane tuijenge nchi yetu pasiwe hata moja anayetenganisha naishi na tumaini na jitolea daima Kenya hakika ya bendera Biti wangu nyeusi ya wana nchi na nyekundu ni atamu kijani ni ya ardhi nyeupe ya amani daima mimi Kenya mwananchi mzalendo Kwa vilio na huzuni Tulinyakuli wa uhuru Na mashuja wa zamani Hawa kustushwa na risasi Au kupungwa gereza ni Nia yao ukombozi Kubunja pingu za ukoloni
mà nắng chim già lên đôi. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, our children. Amen. Buona sfesana. Praise the Lord. I promise you, when Revival Wave Choir comes to sing, you will say it was worth it. Amen. All of us who know Revival Wave Choir, can we just appreciate, how many of you have, have listened to Revival, Choir, Revival Wave Choir before? Amen. Let's just appreciate them. Hallelujah. In just a few moments, they'll be able to come and, um, and just take us through that. That'll be tremendous. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Well, you, as you know, one of the things that um, Apostle Mwabili is very fond of, uh, Apostle Mwabili is very fond of Hebrew. And anapenda sana Kibrania na anapenda alianza kitambo kuchambua na kusoma mambo ya Kibrania. Na kuna maneno ambayo kuna eight words. You know, Apostle Mwabili loves eight and sevens and many things like that. So today we are going to be in the sevens, we are going to be in the eights. We might even go to twelves, but uh, at least sevens and eights. Amen. By the way, incidentally, you notice that Othniel has seven letters, Mwabili has seven letters. And Mwanjala has eight letters. Have you noticed that? One as Fusana. So it's a new beginning. One of his names signifies a new beginning. So we appreciate that. But, um, you know, one of the things that Apostle Mwabili loves is the Hebrew language. And um, today I want to share eight words that Apostle Mwabili loves. If you have ever listened to Apostle Mwabili for any duration of time, kuna maneno mengi sana. Lakini kuna yale mbao huwe na pop up every once and in a while. The first one is Rosh. Everybody say Rosh. Rosh means head, it means the beginning. And uh, so they, that's what we say, Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the new year. Rosh Chodesh, the beginning of the month. Incidentally, here at the Shofar House, every beginning of the month, according to the Hebraic calendar, there's always a service here, whether it's a Wednesday or Tuesday, Sunday, whatever day. As long as it's the head of the month, the Rosh Chodesh, there's always a service here. So Rosh, Rosh is one word. The other word is Shimone. Somebody say Shimone. I'm beginning to sound already like him. Can't you? Nikisema yu inkama haisi o mimi. Inakuwa ni vizuri ni yes. Ni kweli? Shimona, every time you hear Shimona, you see a certain face. And it's not John Magangi. Buwana suwe sana. Anyways, but Shimona means new beginnings. It means covenant. It begins fresh oil. It, begins re it means rebirth. So today is a Rosh Shimona for him. Because it's the beginning of a new beginning. Hallelujah. It's the head of a new beginning for him. So today is Rosh Shimona. Somebody say Rosh Shimona. Glory to God. But I know that Apostle Mobili loves uh, the nation. And so at this point, we're going to take a few moments and pray for the nation. I mean, for the next good while, we're going to be praying for the nation. And we have several awesome, tremendous, wonderful servants of God in the house. We're going to lead us in that session uh, together. And I'm going to just take a few moments and invite uh, four of them to come right now here to the platform. And maybe we can be facilitated with some, uh, some microphones for them to lead us in prayer. Watakuwa kitongoza kwa maombi. Na kwanza kabisa yule mbao tingilipenda kumkaribisha. Ili aje kutuongoza katika maombi haya. Kabla tuja ingia katika consecration service yenyewe. Uh, tutaenda kumu, kumualika mama yetu uh, Reverend Dr. Jordan Bugwa. Hallelujah. She's here. She's going to come. And she's going to lead us in prayer for the family. And then right after she finishes, I will have uh, Bishop Dr. Kefa Umai, the presiding bishop of um, Redeemed Gospel Church. Uh, is right here and he's going to come and lead us uh, specifically concerning church leadership you know recently when we were having the prayer walk in Nairobi the Lord really spoke to us and mentioned to us and said you know the church leadership in Kenya needs to step up higher in order to be ready for the revival that God wants to bring and so we want to just ski into that and you know tuchukue neno lile ambalo Mungu amesema tuweze kulifanyia kazi ili kwamba tusije tukasema tu ndio bwana alinena lakini ni sawa hapana want to just take it up and pray over it so uh, bishop dr kefa Maya will be able to lead us in that portion and then um um you know the, the next item we'll be praying about is the destiny of the nation you know um kenya right now we all know that what's going on right now is not more political than spiritual it's actually more spiritual than political and so apostle john kimani william will come and lead us in prayer for the destiny of kenya i know apostle kimani carries a tremendous burden for the nation and so he'll be able to lead us in that portion. And uh, I'm trying to find uh, Prophetess Ruth Kiyoko. 
Please, oh, she's right there. Thank you, prophetess. You'll come and you'll lead us in prayer, you know, concerning prophetic intercession, that God will raise up prophetic intercessors to be able to midwife and birth the destiny that God desires for us to have as a nation. So kindly may I request uh, these wonderful ministers to go ahead and come to the front. Please, uh, let's have some microphones to help us. And we'll just go flowing one after the other, just two, three minutes, each of us as we continue to pray. Uh, I, Apostle Mabili would not want to have this ceremony to happen without us really connecting with the passion of his heart, which is to pray for the nation of Kenya to experience her full destiny. So praise the Lord. Karibu Mama. God bless you so much. Amen. I think we can all stand. We can all stand. Thank you. I think we should stand for prayer. When I see if you want us to pray for families, I want us to look at ourselves and think of where we have come from. Each one of us has come from a family. You are either a husband or a wife or a child or whatever, but you come from a family. And each one of us can get into this prayer owning it and feeling that I'm a member of a family. And as we look at society, as we look at the families right now, they are not what pleases God, and I'm sure they are not what pleases you. And in the Bible, uh, in the book of Daniel 9, verses 5 to 6, and I'm not going to read, but I'm going to ask us that we bring a repentance on behalf of the family. For the sins of forsaking God's ways, our children, as we look at them, we wonder, are these our children? Did we bring them up? What's happening? Some of it is our fault, some of it is their fault, but this is not time for blaming each other. This is time for bringing a repentance before the Lord and saying, God, you have the power to change us as parents, to change us as grandparents, to change us as children of this nation, that by the grace of God we will be completely changed. We look at the marriage covenant. It is taken very, very lightly, and we just want to pray, God, take us back. Take us back to those days when we valued marriages, when we valued the covenants that we took before you. So, Father, we want you to take us back to that. You also want to pray for the children again because they are disrespecting their, their parents. And we know that carries a curse. That's why our children, some of them are cursed. But we are bringing them back to the place of honoring their parents so that we can too bless them. Can we take a repentance for the family? Hallelujah. Can each one of us pray and I'll conclude this session. Just one minute. Father, we want to bring the family before you in the name of Jesus. We want to bring a repentance before you in of glory. We want to say, Lord, we have not been the parents that we ought to be. We have not been the fathers that we ought to be. We have not been the parents of on behalf of the families of Kenya, starting with the families that are represented here. Lord, we know how much you value families. Father, the first institute you made was that of a family, and then you were born through a family. The first miracle you did was through a family. And Heavenly Father, you are coming back in a family situation where you are going to prepare the Last Supper. And so we know you value families so much. But Father, we have not lived the way that you would want us to live. We have not glorified you, O oh God. But today we come as leaders in Kenya. We come in this place, O oh God. We bring a repentance in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you forgive us, forgive the parents, forgive the children, forgive every member of the families, and help us, Lord, to live the way you want us to live so that we can glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. We also want to pray for revival. Revival of understanding that the home is to be the nurturing and training ground for the army of the next generation that our purposes of God will continue unhindered in that day that we must appreciate that children will learn more by what they see not so much what to tell them and so even as we go home when we come from a place like this what we do at home that is the best training for our children, and that's what they will catch. So we want to pray 
that God will help us so that we be the kind of parents he wants us to be and bring up the kind of families he wants so that our children will be an army, an army that will glorify God. Hallelujah. Can we pray for revival in our families? Blessed be your name, God. According to Psalms 68 and verse 5, the Bible says that God sets the solitary in families. And there are many, many people, many children, either often by AIDS or war or any other kind, and they are lonely. We want to pray for fresh baptism of compassion. Underline that, fresh baptism of compassion. Think of all the children that are sleeping in the streets, and think of all those empty bedrooms in your home. And I want you to know it can happen. Hallelujah. We can pick children and bring them home. We can pick some of those that are very, very rich. And that takes, happens only when we have a baptism of compassion. So we want to pray that God will baptize us with compassion and that we may help these children and those that are refugees that they may have a place to call home can we pray for them and pray for ourselves that we may open our homes hallelujah father you have given us big homes our children have left home oh god and father reach our hearts towards the Mwambili family we want to pray for othniel we want to pray for his wife and their two sons. I want you to speak a blessing. I want you to speak a blessing concerning this family. As Mwambili takes a new office, it takes new responsibilities. He will be away from home more often than he has been before. And unless the Lord helps him, it will be very difficult. But we want to speak a blessing. Speak a blessing. Speak a blessing. Hallelujah. 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 Speak a blessing. Speak a blessing. Speak a blessing. Speak a blessing. Speak a blessing according to his fatherhood for the children. We are praying for families. We want to commit this family to you in the name of Jesus. And we want to ask you that you cover them with the blood of Jesus. Lord God, as my Billy will be busier and busier. We pray to your Heavenly Father that his wife will be able to support him, that you walk together as a family, that you cover with them with the blood of Jesus, that you protect them from every uh, angle that the enemy may want to come from. Cover them and seal them under the blood. We thank you because you are able to do it. Amen. And finally, as I sit down, I want us to make some decrees. Hallelujah. I want us to decree concerning the family. We decree that our families are experiencing a divine visitation. That the husbands and fathers of the families are taking their responsibilities of leading and providing for their families seriously. I want to hear a big amen from men. Hallelujah. This is a decree that we are making and I want to repeat that because it is not really present in many families that the husbands hallelujah and the fathers of our families are taking their responsibilities of leading and providing for their families seriously yeah. hallelujah that's a better amen that the wives and mothers are loving nurturers and committed trainers of the children of our nation and that they will submit to the authority of their husbands. Can I hear a big amen from the women? Amen. amen. We decree and declare that pastors, bishops, and other church leaders in our nation will set a good example for their congregations by loving their spouses and families, a key priority of their ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. And one visible sign of showing your wife that you really love her is holding her by the hand. As you come to a place like this, women like to be held all the time. Can you say another amen? Amen. amen. I decree that husbands will show publicly that they love their wives. Amen. 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 Let's appreciate Mama Reverend Judy Mugwa.
whenever Israel had a godly leader, society and the nation prospered, and vice versa. We want to repent for the fact that generally speaking, it is true that the church leadership in Kenya has focused on success rather than obedience. Everybody lift up your hands. Can we repent? Let's repent. Because our focus has been wrong. We have been focusing on success more than obedience to the great commission obedience to the call of god business a revival of prayer a revival of obedience to the great commission forgive us and help us oh god that even as we gather in this convocation this afternoon father we shall be reminded it's all about your call upon our lives it's about the kingdom mandate it's about the commission that you have entrusted to us in the name of jesus we pray dear father for your servant apostle mabili and pastor nancy that even as they step into this new phase and transition lord you shall cause them to remain to be an example in the body of christ as they have been before in the name of jesus may you grant your servant may you grant pastor nancy leadership skills that will serve the body of christ and usher the body of christ to the end time assignment may i ask all of us now to lift up our hands and make this a decree in jesus name everybody say this after me we decree that the leadership of the body of Christ in Kenya is coming back to righteousness, prayer, purity, contentment, and obedience in Jesus' name. We decree that the anointing of the sons of Issachar upon the leadership of the church is coming in Jesus name we decree that the church in Kenya shall know a season a God set time in Jesus name we now decree and declare that the church leadership in Kenya shall lead by example we also pray and declare that Apostle Mabili, together with Pastor Nancy, will lead the body of Christ to fulfill a prophetic mandate at this time in Jesus' mighty name. Some shout a big amen. We want to commit the destiny of our nation to God and uh, all of us we know that Kenya has been going through a very challenging time the last few months politically, socially, economically. Even when we are gathered here today we know there is a lot of uncertainties going out there and uh, I know there could even be more people today but maybe some of them thought coming to the city might be a challenge but we are here to stand in the gap and to declare that the destiny of Kenya will not be aborted in Jesus' name. We have been serving God together with Apostle Mwambiri in the National Prayer Committee, together with the Chair Bishop Ireri, Bishop Bogwe, and many faces I see here. And I remember when we were doing the National Peace Prayer Caravan, even before the 8th of August, that was in May, God spoke to us and he told us, the battle we are going through as a nation it's not about who is going to win the election. It is all about the destiny of Kenya. Because Kenya has a great destiny. Kenya is a springboard of revival. Kenya is a father nation. Kenya is a right house. It's an economic hub. And we want to pray that God is going to see us through in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the living God. So I just want us to lift our hands and tell God, preserve the destiny of our motherland. It is not going to be aborted in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not going to be delayed. It is not going to be exchanged. It is not going to be weakened. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no evil attack on the destiny of our mother in Kenya. We call upon your name, Lord. We call upon your name, Lord. For whoever shall call upon your name shall be delivered. Oh Lord, deliver the destiny of our mother and Kenya in the name of Jesus. It shall not be aborted in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, preserve our motherland. Preserve our motherland from every attack. In the name of Jesus, break a bagandama. Break a bagandama, Zaya. Break a bagandama, Zaya. In the name of Jesus. Let's agree together in prayer. Everlasting Father, we are gathered here as a body of Christ. And we continue to take our position of authority over the land and the nation of Kenya. We are not supposed to watch helplessly because you have given us the power and the authority in the mighty name of Jesus, even to rule this nation through the power of prayer. And today, my Father, we know the battle that is going on in this nation is a battle of destiny because Kenya has a seed of greatness. And we are here to declare and declare that the destiny of Kenya will not be aborted in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We break the forces of delay. We declare that Kenya will not suffer delay to our destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We declare this nation is not going to suffer any weakness to fulfill her mandate. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are going to heal us, my Father. Even from the political divisions we have experienced in the last few months, in the mighty name of Jesus, we refuse every evil attack over the destiny of Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus, and we is a word of deliverance over the destiny and the land of Kenya. We worship you and we praise you in Jesus' name. I want us to pray that the purposes of God, that the church will continue being vigilant, and we are going to pray that the purposes of God will be fulfilled in this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that even now that the elections are going to be over, people are not going to go back to their comfort zone. But we'll continue lifting our hands. We'll continue watching over the land in the mighty name of Jesus. Just pray that the church is going to remain vigilant in the mighty name of Jesus. May you help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to remain vigilant in the mighty name of Jesus. God gave them a deliverer. Can somebody say, our deliverers are in our midst? And we have come here today to raise one of them. Because we believe that Othiniel Muambiri is a deliverer in the land. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to pray for him. Together with his family, that God is going to release a fresh grace upon Apostle Muambiri. To fulfill his divine assignment and destiny even as he steps into his new office today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are raising a deliverer today in the servant of Apostle Mwambiri, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, together with his dear wife, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, these are deliverers in the land in the nation of Kenya. May you release a fresh mantle in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, they are going to answer the cry of your people in this nation. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, come glorify your name. Come glorify your name. Father, we know every time the children of Israel cried unto you, you raised a deliverer from among them. Today we are here, my Father, because you are raising a deliverer in the land of Kenya in the name of Apostle Mwambili. We lift him before thee, my Father. In the name of Jesus, 
there is a cry in this nation. There is a desperation in this nation. And we know that our deliverers are going to come from among us. In the name of Jesus, may you raise your servant today to become a voice. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, in this land and nation, uh, may you raise your servant today, my father, to be an answer to the cry in government, uh, in politics, my father, in the church, uh, in all the seven mountains, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, raise your servant today, in the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, let a fresh oil come upon him. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, and let your name be glorified as you use him according to your will. We worship you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's make this declaration together. Can somebody say, we decree that Kenya will fulfill her mandate regardless of what the enemy tries to do we decree that justice righteousness peace will continually prevail in kenya we decree and declare that the church in kenya will remain sober and vigilant pushing god's plan and will for the country forward in jesus name amen we give you praise to god praise the lord are we ready to call forth praying people for this nation hallelujah Congratulations, Apostle and Nancy. This is a dream coming to pass. Let's pray. Precious Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we stand at a divine apostolic season for this nation and for the Church of Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus, we call forth midwives who will birth Kenya to a prophetic destiny. We call forth midwives who will birth the church to a prophetic destiny. Father, move by your spirit, O oh God. Raise the Daniel's company. Raise the Esther's company. Raise the Anna's company. We call them forth to arise in the name of the Lord. There'll be no more delay. There'll be no more delay. Kenya we are not a part our destiny in the name of the Lord Jesus. We speak alignment even of the church to the apostolic ministry in the name of the Lord. For this is a divine season. Let the wind of prayer grow from the east. A wave of prayer, a revival of prayer to come the nation in the name of the Lord Jesus. We call Moses company in the name of the Lord. We call the Deborah's company. Who will keep no silence? Who will keep no quiet until righteousness is established over the nation? Oh, Rabba, Sika, Mama. Rabba, Haha. Rima, Ya Rabba. Dika, Ya Rabba. I see a wave. I see a wave. I see a wave of glory coming back to the church. A wave. A wave of prayer. A wave of body. In the name of Jesus. And I hear the Lord say, Rick, <laughs> listen, listen to me, my church. 
The time has come for separation. I am going to separate my church, the wheat from the chaff. For many are conformed to the worldly pattern. I am not the God of compromise. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is the season. Align yourself to this season. Otherwise, you miss my divine purpose. Kenya has been set apart. And I'm looking for people, a remnant, who will stand on my side, who will not compromise. I am the Lord. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come. Remember, this is a new season. Align yourself. Otherwise, I am doing a separation. And you may be left out. For I, the law, will not compromise. I will use those who are ready. For I am not a respecter of persons. I use the weak to assume the wise. And I will use those who are ready. I will use those who are on my side. Irrespective of their status. For I, I am the law. The God of Abraham. Isaac and Israel. I want a church without a blemish or a wrinkle. I am coming as a refiner's fire to set apart my own, my people. My people declares the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As we just um, remain in that attitude of prayer, um, I want to invite uh, Bishop Dr. Oginde to come and just respond to that word for us corporately as he wraps up this time of prayer today. God is speaking to us that it's a time for separation. It's a time to align ourselves with the will of God. That, that which he's doing, he's going to work with those who are ready. And so... Allow me just to invite Bishop Dr. David Oginde to come and just give a response in prayer to that. And maybe Bishop, you can greet us after you're done. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Everlasting Father, your word says that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, whose God is Jehovah. High and seated up with the highest majesty. Lord, as a nation, our forefathers laid the foundation of this nation on the God of all creation. Lord, we want to come back to you and thank you for reminding us that it is a time for us to separate ourselves from the things of this world, from the things that distract from the things that destroy and turn ourselves back to you. Father, as we stand here as your ministers, as we stand here as your servants, as we stand here as your children, on behalf of the nation of Kenya, we pray, O oh God of heaven, that you would be pleased to take us back again as your children. Take us back again as your nation, O oh God. As a prodigal, we have gone ways, O oh God, and spent our lives in wickedness. But today we come back to you and we accept your calling, O oh God, and we return to you as a nation and we declare, O oh God, that we shall no longer go astray after strange things, after strange gods, after strange people, O oh God, but we will look up to the mighty God of Israel to be our God even forevermore. As your servants, we consecrate ourselves. As you have said, this is a time of separation. Father, we separate ourselves, O God, and align ourselves with the will of heaven. And we pray, O God of glory, 
that where we have gone astray, O Lord, may you have mercy upon us. May you have mercy on us, O God, as your people, and bring us back to yourself, O Lord, that we may be called by your name truly, to the glory and to the honor of your name. And so this day, O God, as we celebrate, O Lord, the consecration of your servant, may you also consecrate us, O God, as a people belonging to God, in the mighty name of Jesus, because we are a holy people, a people belonging to God, set apart for you, O dear Father, even according to your word. And so this afternoon, we humble ourselves before you, and we pray that you may receive us, O God, to the glory and honor of your name. For we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 to bring greetings. You may be seated. You don't have to stand while I greet. Amen. It's a joy to be here, to be with our brother, Othniel, as has been said, a great servant of God committed to prayer. I've sat with the apostle in our EAK executive and whenever anything is being discussed and we don't seem to have direction, he stops and says, let's pray. I thank God for a man who has a heart in touch with heaven. Because in the times that we are living in, it is very easy for our hearts to be captured and captivated by the things that are going on around us. And it is important that you have somebody who is in touch with what is going in heaven and always draws us back to that place that we can uh, look up to heaven in every situation that faces us. And so we bring on behalf of the Crisis the Answer Ministries, uh, CITAM, we want to bring our message of congratulations and appreciation to our, our pastor for this great step that God is taking you May he give you the sword of the spirit with which to move in this nation and slay the giants of the land. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's give Bishop uh, Ogide a better heart clap than that. Thank you so much, uh, Bishop Ogide. You know he introduced a new word the other day. Was it dichotomy or what was the word? Dichotomy. Those of us that uh, miss many words in English, we got a new word. Thank you. Uh, I hope we got the meaning of the word dichotomy and what he was talking about. Amen? Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, take us to the next item. Uh, we are all aware that it is good manners to go to the house of God with something. Are we in agreement? And if that be the case, then I'll be asking you to go back to your wallet or your pocket or your heart bag so that we can give to God, and this is not the gift that you'll be giving to our brother, uh, Pastor Mwambiri, uh, who sooner or later will have another title. This is the offering that we do to God, and I don't think we need to preach much about it. It's just good manners to give to God. I think that is enough, is it? So let's go back to our pockets, let's go back to our... And as you take out your wallet, kindly check those that are close to you, so that uh, you do not then have an issue saying you missed the wallet. So it's, it's, it's all in the name of uh, serving God better. As we prepare ourselves to give, and I'm waiting for people to get ready, I'll be asking uh, the choir that missed the opportunity, the wave choir, uh, to come. And I'm hoping... Thank you.
Yeah, let's give them a better heart clap. Yeah, finally they were, I'm told, uh, I think Bishop uh, Omar said, the transmission is fully received. Thank you. Uh, they have been able to do their song. Um, we want to move on to the next item. I'll be inviting the Maasai Choir to come and do a presentation. And as, as the Maasai Choir comes, I don't know how many of you are being blessed by the sound that we have here. Preachers are very keen on sound. How many of you are liking the sound we have here? You liking the sound? Yes. All right, just hold it right there. I'll tell you something in a moment. And as they come, let me say this. There's a story that is told of two animals that got married, a bird and a fish. And they got married, or they wanted to get married and they went to a pastor. And the pastor had no problem joining them because pastors join you with what you come with. So these two were joined, the bird and the fish, they were joined. 
And in the evening, it was time to go for their honeymoon. Uh, where do you think their honeymoon was going to be? Okay. Where do you think your honeymoon was going to be? Where the bird lives or where the fish lives? All right, think about that. Then uh, when they are done, I'll tell you uh, where the honeymoon was held. Masai Choir, please. Let's welcome these people. One, one thing we must all admit is that our brothers from Masai land, including Bishop Tinkoi, have maintained their identity and their culture. And we love their music. Go ahead.